Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto his disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further, and he fell on his face, and he prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. <clears throat> and he cometh unto his disciples, and he found them asleep, and said unto Peter, What, could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again, and he prayed a third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doeth betray me. The picture we have here is the picture of our Lord Jesus Christ on his way to Calvary. He was as fully a human being as he was fully God. There was a, in the incarnation process, that God became man. Where that God, God became man in, 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 in flesh and blood bodies such as you and I. But yet, he, he never knew no sin. He never committed no sin. He kept the, the law perfectly. See, as we've talked about in the past, that the law of God is a perfect law. And that if you're going to be perfect before God, then you've got to be perfect in that law. But the truth of the matter is, there was no redeeming value in the law of Moses. It couldn't save it. Literally, that law of Moses was a giant mirror that was held up in front of you and I to show you and I the sinful condition that you and I are in. Each, each and every one of us was born in sin. We are sinners by default according to the Word of God. The Word of God in Romans 3 and 13 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I don't know about you, but I was born a sinner. I needed saving. There, there came a point in my life where that I did not know that I was lost. But thank God I was sitting up in Wallace Road Baptist Church one night and, a, and an old time gospel preacher, an old heart sheller, if you might say, got up behind the pulpit and began to talk about hell, he began to he began to talk about the, the place that I was going to go and if I did not get saved and he told me about a God that loved me so much that he sent his son to die on the cross of Calvary for me and conviction got a hold of my heart and I knew then that something inside of me was missing. Something that maybe I had thought there were different things in life that would make me happy but I realized that night that there was only one thing and one thing only that would solve the, the, the problem with my soul that would fill the, the emptiness in my soul and I knew that answer had to be Jesus Christ and what He did on Calvary for me. I looked around and I saw other people. I saw how happy they were. I saw they had something deep down inside that I seemed to be missing. My happiness was only temporary. My happiness didn't last as, as long as theirs did. And, and so I, I realized that I was missing something on the inside. Yeah. Right. Come on, brother. The flesh will never satisfy you. Happiness here on this earth is only temporary. If, if we're going to have true joy and true happiness deep down in our soul, it's got to be anchored to something other than something that is connected to this world. You see, Jesus was in this world, but He was not of this world. He was in this world, but His anchor was not anchored into this world. Not into this kingdom of darkness. No, huh? Jesus' anchor was anchored in the heavenlies. It was in the place where God abode, where His Father was. That's where He was anchored. And yet Jesus was flesh and bone. Just like you and I that you don't sin. Jesus was on His way to the cross. And, 
And that, that flesh, that, that flesh began to began to weaken and began to, to, to tear on him. And, and he felt the heaviness and the, the burden of the weight that, that he would carry going to the cross of Calvary. And, and this is why he began to pray and he began to he began to ask his father that if there was any way that that cup could pass from him then let it be so. And what he was talking about was, Lord, is there any other way? Father, is there any other way that redemption can come other than the way that you have planned out for me to go to the cross of Calvary? And, and, and we know the story. Jesus, He went and He, he prayed and the, and the Bible says that His sweat became as great drops of blood. He was in such agony. Listen, I, my uncle years ago brought home some paintings from the flea market or the auction or wherever there was a little light that you flipped on on the front and it showed Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane and he was all knelt down with his pretty robes and his long hair and, and the moon was shining just right and he was praying there and that was supposed to be the garden of Gethsemane before he went to Calvary. Listen, the painter had it all wrong when he began to paint that because it was not a peaceful time. It was a time of, of torment in his heart. It was a, a time of anguish. He, he felt the burden and the weight of what it was that, that he must go and he must do and and hang on the cross of Calvary for every single one of you. Jesus, 2,000 years ago, went into that garden with a, a burden and a weight upon His heart and a, an agony and a turmoil, but yet He stayed there and He prayed and He was in, in such agony that the blood and the sweat literally came drops of blood and He was bleeding as He was praying there for you and me. He stuck it out. He took the three with Him. Yeah. You know, Jesus had a, a big circle of the twelve, and then He had an inner circle. And that was Peter, James, and John, the sons of thunder. And Peter, who was always thundering off the mouth about something anyway. But He, he took them with Him. You know, I think Jesus might have needed a little encouragement. You know how it is. Sometimes you, you just need somebody with you. You just want somebody with you. Right. I remember one night they called me up and there was a old boy that that I knew had lived up the road from us. And he was kind of wild. He, he almost had a head-on crash with me one day in my tow truck. He was coming down East Cherokee and I turned to the right going toward K-Way. And he'd come all the way over in my lane with that car. And if I hadn't went up through that man's grass, he would have head on into my tow truck. Well, he spun around, come back, and just cussed me for everything. And I was like, hey, buddy, I was the one on my side of the road. You was the one on the wrong side of the road. So he was just all up in my face and all that, and I could tell that something about him wasn't right. I mean, it, it wasn't that... It wasn't that he was just mad. There was just something about him that wasn't right. He was about two or three French fries short of a happy meal. <laughs> and so I kind of just blew it off and I let it go. And so it rocked on there a little while. And I, <clears throat> I saw him and, and uh, we had this girl that had been going to our church. And she had moved to Woodstock and had moved into a rental house with some guy. And so I went over there one day to help her move something. And she opens the door. And there's this guy that almost hit on me in my tow truck a few years earlier. And I'm thinking, oh man, not him. Well, he was nice and everything. But then about two days later, it blew up. Big fight. She calls the house. She's crying squalling. Saying he's a threatening me, he's a threatening to do this, and he jerks the phone up, and he's a cussing, and he said, Come get her stuff, come get her stuff. And you know, he's just, and I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to go over there by myself. <laughs> and so I called my buddy up on the phone. I said, Hey man, I said, You think uh, you might go with me somewhere tonight? I said, That gal's getting kicked out of this guy's house that she had shacked with over there. And, uh, I said, I'll just be honest, I'm not real keen on going over there by myself. He said, what's the matter? Ain't you got no faith? 
I said, oh, I got plenty of faith, all right, but I like a little flesh and blood standing beside me whenever I'm over there. <laughs>